What's good? Brian Tong here, and we're finally getting more and more pieces to the Apple Watch Series 7 puzzle. Plus, there's some more AirPods Pro 2 stuff and MacBook Pro chatter. So let's just get right into it. And the Apple Watch has, you know, hit a little bit of a plateau from a feature standpoint. I still haven't updated mine since the Series 4, and it is still one of my favorite Apple products of all time, hands down. But what might be coming for the Apple Watch Series 7 this year? Well, ET News claims the Apple Watch Series 7 will feature a new health sensor, bringing blood glucose monitoring via an optical sensor for the very first time. And it would be a non-invasive optical sensor to measure your blood sugar levels to help manage conditions like diabetes. Now, this is huge because worldwide, there's an estimated 463 million people that are diagnosed with diabetes today. Compare that to 33 million people suffering from atrial fibrillation that the current ECG monitor can help detect. Now, this could be another feature that makes the Apple Watch an even more essential device if this new glucose sensor works well enough. Apple currently sells this one-drop chrome blood glucose monitoring kit that still requires you to draw blood for an accurate measurement. This rumored glucose sensor won't require you to draw any blood at all. Now, Apple has already been granted patents around glucose monitoring. They have a dedicated team of specialists working on sensors for non-invasive blood sugar level monitoring. And even CEO Tim Cook was spotted testing a glucose monitor connected to his Apple Watch just a few years ago. Now, it's expected that the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4, that will also get a sensor like this of its own. But it's the Apple Watch that's really the world's best-selling smartwatch. And it has a whole lot more room to grow because nearly 75% of Apple Watch customers bought one for the very first time, according to Apple's recent earnings report. That's just huge. And it shows that Apple Watch sales are far from slowing down, even if current owners like me you know, are hoping for more from the Series 7, especially this year. Now, I even did my own poll during Apple's Time Flies event last year. And most of you who are watching, I know that you're pretty deep into the Apple ecosystem. Well, out of over 550 responses, I asked if you owned an Apple Watch and which one. You can see this breakdown for yourself, but 25.4% of respondents said, I don't own one yet, which indicates that they're planning on possibly getting one in the future. And that's a whole lot of potential growth even from existing Apple users. Now, there have been rumors of new micro LED displays in a future Apple Watch that would be a thinner display and more power efficient, and even a rumored larger screen size option coming to the lineup. I would love that. Potentially solid state buttons with haptic feedback on the side, and even a Touch ID sensor on the digital crown right over here to unlock the watch without a passcode, but none of it has been reported as a confirmed feature for the Apple Watch Series 7. So if you're an Apple Watch user that's been looking to upgrade like me, I know you're anxious. I mean, what feature would make you upgrade? What do you want to see? Like what would really make you pull the trigger? Look, put it in the comments so I can read it when I'm shaving my legs. Come on, I don't really do that. Do I? But if you want a new feature, you don't have to wait. Apple recently released a new feature called Time to Walk that's inside the workout app. It features audio stories from four celebrities like the iconic Dolly Parton, or NBA champion from the Golden State Warriors, Draymond Green. Now you can listen to them with connected AirPods or Powerbeats while you go on a walk through the workout app. It's additional content to bring more value, but if you don't care about the celebs, you probably won't care about the content. This is just a start, but Apple will need to grow this library of content regularly and diversify it quickly for people to really care about it. Now you'll also need to update to watch OS 7.3 on your supported Apple Watch, with wireless earbuds or headphones that connect to your watch and then have an active Apple Fitness Plus subscription to check it all out. There's also a few other new features in watchOS 7.3, the ECG app and irregular heart rhythm notifications on Apple Watch Series 4 or later is now available in countries like Japan, the Philippines, Thailand, and others. Apple's also releasing a limited edition Apple Watch Series 6 inscribed with Black Unity and a Black Unity sport band it will be available February 1st in the US for $399 and in 38 countries. You can also purchase the Sport Band for $39 separately. Now, watchOS 7.3 also adds a new Unity watch face that's inspired by the colors of the Pan African flag. The shapes on it are going to change throughout the day as you move and then complement the new watch release. All right. Thanks to Morning Brew for sponsoring this video. Before I signed up for Morning Brew, I would just aimlessly go through my Twitter feed or hop on a few sites to start my day, but I don't have to anymore. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter every Monday to Saturday that puts the most important news up front and gets me up to speed in about five minutes. 
It delivers the news in short form articles that are witty and relevant while giving me the info that I need. You won't find long drawn out writing here and it's great for people who want the most important details. Morning Brew broke down the four theories for me that might have contributed to the GameStop stock explosion. Plus, I had no idea how Ivy League schools are now drowning in admissions during the pandemic. There is no reason not to subscribe to Morning Brew if you're interested in business, finance, or tech like me. It's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe. Click the link in the description below to subscribe to Morning Brew today. All right, let's get back into it. And Apple had another record-setting quarter for the first fiscal quarter of 2021, which corresponds to the fourth quarter of 2020, which is October to December. Now, they reported $111.4 billion of revenue and $28.8 billion of profit. The iPhone 12 lineup was a huge part of that, making up 59% of their total revenue. At number two, Apple services at 14%, which is a surprise, honestly. And then bunched together, you have wearables, home and accessories that made up 12% of revenue while the iPad and the Mac product lines both made up 8% on their own. And it just shows you how far Apple services have become a crucial part of their business. But I like to look inside that 12% slice where the AirPods are because according to strategy analytics, Apple is just absolutely dominating the global wireless headset market. The true wireless stereo Bluetooth headset market grew by almost 90% last year. Okay, 90% with total sales of over 300 million units. And who's the biggest piece of that pie? Well, you guessed it, it's Apple. And you know, they don't release specific sales numbers here, but if you look closely, Apple makes up about, what, 40% or just under 40% of the entire market right now. The number two player, Xiaomi, that looks like about, what, one fourth the size of Apple? Number three is Samsung, number four is Huawei. And we know that competition is getting stronger and prices are going down across the industry while Apple keeps their price at the Apple price. But Apple is still expected to keep its lead. We do know that that slice of the pie will get smaller with stronger competition coming in 2021. But Apple plans on holding them off based on a Digitimes report that says the second generation of AirPods Pro are planning to be released by Apple within the first half of this year. And we've heard early reports from Bloomberg that Apple has been trying to make the new AirPods Pro smaller with a more compact design that could mean eliminating the stems that stick out on the bottom. I know some of you think that they are iconic. Um, I've always thought they're ugly and I prefer that just cleaner Galaxy Buds and Buds Pro design with just that rounder shape. I just like it clean like that. But we also have to see if they can make a design that keeps the uh, left AirPod Pro in my ear when I talk for extended periods of time because that thing keeps getting loose and popping out and I know that I'm not the only one. You are too. Now, other than improved sound and then better mic clarity, I think they've really packed as much as they can. Look, we got spatial audio and handoff, which have been two amazing additions that were just over the air software updates and earlier reports from Mako Takara targeted April as the release month. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. And since we're sticking with audio, I must have totally just missed this, but Apple's AirPods Max ear cushions are now available to purchase if you wanna make sure you have replacements or unless you know you just wanna floss with a new color combination, which I do. Now they won't come cheap at $69 per pair, but if you order them now, the white and black ear cushions will arrive on February 3rd and 4th. If you're going for red or blue or green, those have an eight to 10 week waiting time on them. All right, let's be honest, Apple. Did you only make like 10 units of each of these for the colored cushions? Because you know what? That's a sad Apple. Aww. Hmm. And you know what? We know there is just so much hype and energy around the upcoming Mac lineup for 2021 because a while back we had heard Apple was granted patents for developing methods to make a matte black metal finish for a future MacBook Pro. Well, a new filing found by Patently Apple adds a new metal to this rumor with filing titled titanium parts having a blasted surface texture. Now in this filing, Apple says the current anodized aluminum used on MacBooks and iPads is not as hard or as durable as titanium, but the hardness of titanium makes it very difficult to etch and can be aesthetically unattractive. So this patent describes how they could blast, etch, and use a chemical process to give the titanium body a more attractive appearance and then potentially other future Apple products like iPhones or Apple Watches alongside of iPads and MacBooks. Now the goal is to give it a distinctive surface finish that diffuses and reflects visible light to make it look different than any other conventional titanium part. 
But let's not also forget for all you young ones out there that Apple used to have a titanium MacBook Pro in the past for their PowerBook G4s. Now, the only product that might employ some of these techniques that they're talking about to give it this nice finish that we could see on a future MacBook Pro or other devices is the current Apple Watch Edition with a titanium casing. Now, like all patents, it doesn't mean that this is happening, but you know, it's a fun look inside at how Apple is thinking about their future products. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my videos when they drop. And if you want more, 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 you can check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. But thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody. Be safe, peace, and love.